So what's good, y'all? My name is Ishmael. I'm a photographer uh, here in Dayton. I'm not sure how many of y'all here in the area. Um, but I do photography, videography, podcasting, a little bit of everything. So I'm um, kind of interested in this conversation because two weeks ago, um, we talked about a little bit about technology and how it was affecting the music industry. And even there, we got into a little bit of conspiracy stuff that we can kind of get into towards the end. Um, but I'm going to go down the list and let y'all introduce yourself, starting with Dell. My name is Dell. I'm a producer. I'm um, currently at, uh, in hell right now. I mean, work, my bad. Uh, <laughs> so excuse the background noise. But uh, yeah, man, I'm 28 years old. I'm coming out of Dayton, Ohio. I love music. Emphasis on love music. I mean, it should save my life. My bad for cussing again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to the next person. Uh, next, we got James. Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm James. Uh, I'm the owner of DLGV Radio. I'm sporting a Carrie's Creation t-shirt. I really love it. She's very positive, motivating. Uh, I want to promote just music, and I try to just push out every bit of the community as far as poetry, motivation, and aspirations, innovation, whatever it really takes to get people motivated to do whatever it is they got to do in their lives. That's the, that's the purpose. Is it Karen? Karen? Karan. Karan. Oh, oh, Karan. My bad. My bad. Oh, no, you're good. That's fine. I'm, I'm Karan Lee. Uh, I go by Karan, like the MC. I'm an artist here, an MC, rapper, you know, songwriter. And um, What's going on, my I'm boy, glad to man? be a part of the podcast. It sounds like an interesting topic. So I know all of us got our questions and theories and stuff like that. So, okay. Next, we got Jerron. How's it going, guys? I'm a, oh, hey. I'm a vocalist primarily a songwriter my artist name is dean cosmic uh just released an ep like a month and a half ago or so and uh, i got a website if anybody wants to check out my stuff www.deancosmic.com but yeah i'm here to enjoy the discussion talk to some new people okay cool next we got Kiri. hey thank you ishmael man I, i'm Kiri, and i'm come from here in the dayton area i grew up here my whole life i'm 25 now and I'm an audio engineer on the side, full time. I work a nine to five job in a factory. Uh, and I'm just aspiring to make my way to full time music. And so this is a great topic for me because from the outside looking in, it seems like there's a lot of smoke and mirrors in the industry that in the music industry that makes it intimidating for the average person to want to even be a part of it to begin with. And so me having some years now getting into it. I really have some things to talk about. So to start the conversation, again, it's going to be like a more open, free-form conversation. We kind of just going to let it go a little bit where it goes. Um, but the number one thing that we all see or hear about when it comes to conspiracies in the music industry is the Illuminati or like the elitism um, in the industry. And it's just certain people at the top that are responsible for everything that goes on in the industry. So how do y'all feel about the role that stuff like the Illuminati or the elites play in the music industry. I'm saying it feels like uh, it's definitely something going on. Somebody orchestrating from behind the scenes. Like a lot of what we get, a lot of people don't think think like the narrative is what it is. I think that a lot of stuff goes on for publicity. A lot of stuff is staged. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and just make that statement. Yeah, I feel like it's staged too. I feel like uh, like in order to like enter, think about entertainment. Like think about how you're entertaining somebody. It's literally, you know, you're scripting it together, trying to find out all the funniest things you could say, funniest things you could do, and you put it together and you're like, hey, you know, let's see the reaction. Let's see the ratings from this. You know what I mean? So I feel like, yeah, like big influencers, even business people can like, you know, manage stocks right. based off of, you know, what an artist may do, you know, what they may buy and influence people to buy or whatnot. You know what I mean? But yeah, I just, I just believe like, yeah, everything's controlled by, uh, how people just uh, perceive things, just any and everything, like uh, TikTok, for instance. TikTok has literally anything, any and everything on it, and people can promote all sorts of stuff. You know what I mean? And they can make money off of it, either that be through merch or be through whatever. You know what I mean? So you remember the yeah. the first major abuse claims against TikTok were to do with like the Chinese government spying on people yeah, yeah. and how that yeah. was an issue with the military. So that in itself is like a huge conspiracy. Right. Yeah, yeah. Social media in general, like didn't, wasn't there like that, uh, that face app 
where the Russian people were taking pictures of uh, people's faces and then they could use them for whatever now. Oh, yeah, for like, for yeah, yeah. Things. Yeah. I felt like we like assumed that China was just trying to get business on us. I felt like it was like our, our little beef with China and what we have with China. And they were like trying to like make something out of it. You know what I mean? Create something like, like Illuminati being like tied to 9-11 or something like that. Just it's like, you know, something, some sort of reaction. Maybe you know another I mean? tool they're using to like break uh, some of these industry plants. But that's another mm -hmm. conspiracy involved with that TikTok. Mm -hmm. And maybe that might tie in somehow. I don't know. Well, who has time to sit around and, and make TikTok videos? Not the, not the average person working 50, 50 something hours a week to make ends meet. The people who already have everything made have plenty of time. Unless they're doing them at work. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why I think you see majority of them are young, you know? You see a lot of younger, younger audience people, you know, like the Hype House on TikTok is just majority young, youthful kids, you know? People our ages, sort of. Yeah. Kids rule the world. <laughs> yeah. In a way, it's like true all through, you know, how you raise it. Come out of TikTok. So when they add new things to the industry, like TikTok, and even how they kind of even now can kind of control how you can even just use music on Instagram, do y'all feel like that's intentional to kind of direct the industry in a certain way? Or are they just trying to find new tools to just make more money? It's an easy distraction, I think. I feel like you it's know? both, obviously. Plus, ultimately, it, you know, they always trying to hide everything from us. They want us to know what they yeah. what they want us to know. You know, like yeah. it's a lot of stuff that goes on behind closed doors, like on both yeah. sides of the spectrum. As an artist, just the whole the whole entertainment industry, man, is like it's it's so taboo, man. Like there's good and there's bad, but right now it's more so bad than good. You feel me? Yeah, they mm -hmm. give us so much dumbed down content to digest. Then it's like, then they expect well, us to not feel like they're trying to dumb us down or certain stuff. Or I feel like they're not, they're holding, they yeah. hold back a lot of the heavy or more intelligent stuff in the mainstream. And then they yeah. cover it up with a new TikTok challenge. You know what I mean? Like, they yeah. use the milk like, everything is programmed, everything is yeah. scheduled. You feel me? Yeah. TikTok is definitely a tool, I believe. I believe like, any sort of new product like Instagram, Twitter, or anything like that is definitely a, a tool that you can use, that anybody can use to, you know, make anything uh, happen. You know what I mean? Make a crowd go crazy. The thing about those platforms is all of them, you can pay for advertisement just like they could yeah. with the TV, but it's more accessible now. So these labels are just putting their artists out there with the catchiest song, with the best, most attractive yeah. person they can find, yeah. you know? And I, right. you don't stand a chance here. <laughs> We don't have that kind of money, you know what I mean? Easy money maker for them and kind of just a shot in the, in the dark for us. It's a shot in the dark yeah. for us as local artists yeah. to try to make anything out of it. Like you pair up one of their songs with somebody that has like good quality content, like maybe something funny and then it's going to blow up, get millions of views and that's free advertisement right there if it's not sponsored, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. So do y'all believe there's any truth to the idea that there are streaming farms set up by different labels to kind of help amplify whatever music or whatever albums they want at the top of the charts oh yeah, for sure all right. yeah. All right. yeah oh yeah all right. oh yeah because like it's the same as like people getting random messages like the bots and stuff like that it's the oh, same yeah, it's like, dude, it's like how, i don't know crazy. for sure even small companies i know for sure they're using bots and programs to, and they, their, their services are offering people to inflate their numbers and a lot of it is a lie they're, they're promising that like, real interactions and some of Big them are reviews. flat out truthfully with you. They're telling you like, oh, it's bots, but we, it's, it's going to help you look good. And it's not worth it at the end of the day to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard out here. And I don't think these big companies make it any much easier because they kind of already own everything. Like yeah. Instagram is owned by Facebook. So you run ads on Instagram to give a billion dollar company what they already have. And it's kind of not really actually taking you to the next level. Not to say yeah. it can't. It can but it's a shot in the dark and they are clearly winning every time, whether yeah. you do or not. It's like a little fish trying to eat a big fish, you know? It's like, how, how are you going to wrap your mouth around that? What's going to happen there? Well, I, I wanted to actually say in, towards the beginning of this, actually, that um, my view on conspiracies and in anything, but in the music industry, is that reality is stranger than what you can make up. It's stranger than fiction. Honestly, what's already actually real and there's actual facts, provable facts, is way more insane than anything that you could just make up or, or kind of speculate.
It's I mean, already it's, it's all, already crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all it. it's all in front of you. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Some, some of it. But the I, the tip of it is. In the tip. Yeah. Yeah. So Which is enough. Okay. follow the money. <laughs> you know, a lot of it isn't even conspiracy. It's just not have enough information or enough perspective to basically explain what that was what you what's going on. <laughs> so when you say that like life is life is more strange than fiction a lot of times, right? So do what do y'all how do y'all kind of connect that to the idea of like the 27 Club, how there are so many like growing influential artists who all seem to pass away around the age of 27? I think it's the 21 Club now. Yeah, I was looking at that. They're even younger now. XXX. But, I don't know. How it's still, old he it's was, still, it's still a 27. He was 20. He was 20. Yeah, you don't make it, you don't make it past a certain age, bro. And this is how I feel. You feel me? Like when they feel like you have the ability to control the masses. They don't like that. They don't yeah. like your influence. So yeah. they try whatever they can do to damage your career. You know, like look how they did X. You know, he was he was in and out of trouble his whole career. Same mm-hmm. thing with NBA Young Boy. That man mm-hmm. be in and out of jail all the time. You feel me? So it's like, why are y'all? And, and unfortunately, I don't mean to say it like it's a black thing, but you know, kind in a way, it kind of is because there's a lot of young black cats right now. You know, kids younger than all of us that's on this line right now, that's in jail, famous, you know, don't really have to worry about anything. Don't have to really work a day in their life. Don't have to work um, a nine to five job. Absolutely. Um, to stem off the 27 Club idea, um, if you ever heard, I can't remember the name of the book right now, but it was called like something Dreams of the Valley or something. It was like about the hippie movement. You can look it up like hippie movement conspiracy. And it's a whole book like exposing how a lot of the rock stars back in the 70s like Jimi Hendrix and uh Jim Morrison and um uh you know uh cats like that were actually they grew up on military bases and like their parents were high up in the military kind of giving them these ideas to make people be hippies and influence them to want to take psychedelic drugs to think they're expanding their minds and like doing different crazy things but actually they're uh being patrolled and being watched by the military the whole time out in the desert it's wow. pretty crazy because I never knew that until I started looking into it. And I was like, whoa, this is way more fake than I thought. This whole hippie yeah. movement thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some some stuff can be pretty real. We we have like uh, like uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the, the, the CIA, they release like uh, millions of files every once in a while. And uh, they just recently dumped like uh, just like, I guess, a million or so files that they just released to the public. You know, hey this is now public knowledge we've known this for too long here you go i mean we don't care if you know now and so a lot of that stuff is like alien findings and or more like people who have said they have seen them have been interviewed by the government or the cia or in a way and it's and there's uh experimentations about um like uh lsd and acid just how um they uh utilize it to try to control people through mind control and things it's a whole lot of, and, it, and it's weird to 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 hear to you know, it was like oh is this like a actual thing is this real no way but it's it's legit you know yeah people i, I thought it crazy. was about opening your mind and going out to the forest and connecting with nature but actually there's yeah. a whole like sinister side to it oh there's, <laughs> you know, it's crazy it's i want to hear some alien music yeah mind control oh, aliens, yeah. cloning the whole nine it's a lot of crazy terms that come up when you talk about conspiracies dealing with the industry especially the cloning yeah. part yeah. yeah the cloning the mind control especially my bad for cutting whoever was speaking out but most definitely mind control bro like energy and like sound waves they like hand in hand like i don't know if y'all seen um this episode of the thousand ways to die but this dude was making this beat so hard he blew his brain up like i'm not i'm, I'm i might be over exaggerating i'm blowing his brain up. i heard that it's, it's, his brain basically melted because I believe it. The sounds he, he was using it was a certain frequency. They called it the death brain. tone. What? Yeah, yep. That's crazy. yep, yep. Wow, that's why I got a different producer. I, I don't produce my own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you want to blow your own mind? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what about like the artists? Like it's like Michael Jackson, Elvis, Tupac. Um, I think John Lennon from. The Beatles, who are all supposedly still alive and fake their deaths and are kind of like off site and in black sites living their lives still. Like, what do y'all think about that? It's possible. 
that's a lot of trouble to go through. It's possible. Again, with the reality is crazier than fiction. People overlook the fact that um, that how many predators there are. Like I'm talking about sexual predators and child predators that there are in the entertainment business that for some reason goes overlooked for years and years and years and years. So that in itself is like you're living a double life because even though you don't fake your death, you know, before you, before ever it comes to light, it's like people know, but nobody talks about it. And why, why does it, why do decades go by before anything even happens to certain artists like uh, Elvis Presley, you know, he's remembered for his amazing stage presence and his, his awesome voice, but he's not quite known for, you know, having married like a 14 year old, but he, but he did. So like, uh, that's what, that's my input. If I was that famous, I'd probably want to pretend to be dead too. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, I just see the reason why. But my question is, if they did fake their death, and then they really died after that, how, would we know? Would that be revealed? Would that part be okay? They were, or would they just, or would we never find it out? People are still gonna be saying they're still alive. They faked their death. I'm like, okay, right. they could have died a day after that, and then no one would ever know. It's a clone. They'd be like, ah, Gucci me. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a quick pause, real quick. Uh, Davion. Go ahead, introduce yourself. Oh, what's good, everybody? So this is boy Davy from Davy Productions. Sorry for my tardiness. I appreciate being on the panel. Hey, what's going on with the boy, man? What's good? So right now we're talking about, uh, of course, conspiracy theories. We're on the topic of artists who have been known or alleged to affect their death. Oh, like Tupac or yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> like, like Tupac walking around the city right now. Like X, X, X supposedly. <laughs> even Juice. So do y'all think that there would be it's still kind of deals with music in a way, but even like if you look at what they did with a lot of like revolutionary leaders, how they just allegedly were assassinated, not by the government. Um, yeah. do you think that is something in the music industry? or the government that's pushing towards coming to these artists like, look, what you're doing, we kind of need you to step back. Like, could Elvis, his death, could the conspiracy around his death be because it was starting to um, become more attention brought to the fact that he was married essentially to a minor? Or could Tupac and just kind of because he kind of echoed a lot of the ideologies of like a Malcolm X or Fred Hampton for the Black Panthers, could that have contributed to them pushing towards him faking his death. Karan, you can go ahead. Okay, to go back to what uh, what Delhi has said earlier, I think it has a lot to do with just influence. When you look at musicians, you know, the statistics are saying that they have more influence over the youth than now preachers and teachers are artists. So mm -hmm. that's a dangerous thing for the ones who want to, you know, control most of that. They, I feel like in a roundabout way, maybe certain artists do, you know, get approached and those certain cats or characters or whoever those figures are, they want to maybe pay them to control their influence or maybe to so they can use their influence for whatever agenda that may benefit their business. You know, a lot of times it's just down to business to me, you know, whether it's private owned prisons, whether it's anything that stem like that, they want to influence a certain market and they use influential, influential artists to do that. Let's use like Wiz Khalifa. For example, if somebody wanted to sell weed, they're using him as the flagship to get some of our youth to, you know, buy to buy into that. Well, I think I think oh, yeah. uh, just your average family, you know, mom, dad, kids, uh, I think that they want their kids to listen to their teachers and they want them to listen to certain type of authority figures more than artists. So it's not it, like you got to think about it from multiple angles. Like, yeah, it's frustrating that you know if you never say a bad word and you never uh, or go over the edge that. Uh, you, you might make it further, like you might get signed to Disney, Disney deals. But, um, you know, at the same time, it's like, you know, should kids really be having the most foul like role models? I mean, not necessarily, but the freedom should always be there. So it's just something to think about. I don't really believe in censorship myself. Like uh, I was allowed to watch South Park and like uh, kind of like shows with a lot of foul language language when I was a kid. And um, it didn't ruin me. I don't think, but um, I can kind of see like, you know, why a mom and dad would kind of like, just not, not talking from an industry perspective, but just why like average people would not really want their kids to be super influenced by like a lot of entertainers because um, yeah, like you were saying, some of them are up to no good. And um, like Karan was saying, some are just pushing like business agendas and stuff. And by the way, has anybody heard about that busy bone interview where he was talking about uh, like a lot of labels owning stocks in uh, private prisons? 
and how they like yeah. sat down and talked with them. That's some wild stuff. That's a whole can of worms. There was a there was actually a conspiracy about that, like a, a email that was sent out to all these leads of these record companies to have this meeting about how they could influence music or have music be influential enough to have people come through the prisons. You know what I mean? Just leading these specific type of people. A little bit tying into that, not necessarily the fake and death part, but kind of pushing or using music or artists to kind of influence stuff like that, like the prisons and how there was like a time in, especially in like rap music, where it was super criminalized and perceived as like violent and negative. Do you think that that was an intentional thing to kind of help fill those prisons and keep them kind of open to operating? Yeah, yeah I've been think- told by ex-convicts that it is. That they say if there's stocks in the prisons, then absolutely. I didn't hear about that. I mean, from the record labels. So um, so he was kind of saying how he was talking about the idea of music, uh, music executives owning stock in prisons and kind of doing things to kind of keep the prisons operating, but kind of coding it and hiding it behind music. So do you think like kind of like their push to kind of make to kind of keep Chicago, how Chicago is like now known for the drill scene It's always what neighborhood against what neighborhood, like which rappers are killing each other. Do you think that they're intentionally using music to kind of continue to push those things? Or is it just a byproduct of just society in general? I think they just give the people what they want, whatever makes them the most money. You know what I mean? Maybe that's, maybe if that's true about the stocks and the prisons, if that's the, Bro. like a, a consequence of that. Hey, listen, if gospel music was, the, was making them money, they'd be pushing gospel music. In a capitalistic like world, like it's kind of hard to figure out what to actually believe and what not because there's so much information out there. If you want to make something make sense, I can make something completely stupid but make it sound real good and almost believable. So no one trying to deal with the facts that we live in like a capitalistic society on the side of whatever's going to make them like the most money. But it is crazy the, the psychology piece behind it that um why do we appeal to just as people? Because if we didn't appeal to it, they wouldn't give it to us. But it's crazy how in our minds, like we actually like, let's say if it's gangster rap or if it's whatever the case may be, like how much we're drawn to that. But I mean, I guess some of that is kind of the circumstances around a lot of us anyway. So I don't know, like it, it's interesting to think about, but I think it more so has to do with money more so than yeah. Anything. There may be a component of them trying to control through music, but I do think majority of it is just like money. We keep consuming it like crazy, so hey, they right? Do what they do. I think it's I think it's crazy that people buy into like music that says we seek to um, use this music to raise the crime rate or to like raise the murder rate, and some of those waves are are getting bought into and getting invested in, and then you see the results. And it's like, I feel like there's like a conspiracy involved with that too. And it's just crazy to see like, that's what the youth are gravitating to. That's what the influence of being in the trend in the last few years have been like murder rappers. And and I think that's the wave of what, that's what's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like People back in the nineties. Yeah, like back in like, uh, what was it? Like back in the nineties, there was a thrash metal scene that uh, band, certain bands were getting sued. Like I think Judas Priest for like uh, teens yeah, killing themselves. Too. Yeah, teams also. killing themselves and they're blaming it on the lyrics and then the bands were getting sued and um i think they were getting off on it but it, it's kind of a similar like it's just the rebellious phase of this violence. generation who knows what it'll be in 10 15 years i don't know might be so, back to some sort of metal or something I don't i've know. never wanted to commit violent acts because of music that i've listened to even if the content right. was violent so i guess i'm just that type of person that's more so strong-willed and i know what i'm listening to is is fake a certain person that can take the entertainment for what it is that can separate the artist from the product or from the entertainment. And then there's the people that are invested all the way hundred percent in it. Those that think wrestling is real or something like that. I'm like, ah, it's, it's not reality. <laughs> a youthful mind. And in a way, ignorance is, is bliss that way. You know I mean? You got a lot of people who live in ignorance. It's like, um, there's this, uh, I believe it's called the Republic. It's a story about how you know, you're trapped in a box and it's a dark box. You only see the shadows on the wall and the shadows on the wall are all you know. And somebody comes out of a closet behind you and unchains you and takes you up this hill that's just nothing but gravel. And you're struggling and crying and you get to the top and you see the sun and you're like, holy smokes, I've never seen the sun in my life. This is scary and it's just too much right now. 
too much. What is that? Water? That's crazy. Oh my gosh. I'm going back. So you go back and you put your change back in because that's because that's what you are used to. That's what you like, like that, or or more not so like, but are used to what you've right. lived with. So you go back to that because the what what you see may be overwhelming or it just might be too much for you to handle or too much for you to want to handle. Right. Yeah, I agree with that hundred percent. So I know some some of you guys are artists and some of you guys are producers. So how does that affect the messaging that you put out or the messaging that you allow on the music that you're a part of? Like, do you consider stuff like that? I do. When you're working with people. I definitely, because what I'm trying to do with my music is I'm trying to add that familiar pop element with like some more introspective lyrics that might not go noticed the first listener. So, because I'm trying to blend it with that pop sound. That's the way I'm trying to do my thing in that light thinking about all that stuff too yeah you make positive music i listened to your music before thanks man it sounds pretty positive yeah yeah i I feel like uh the energy we put out is important and you know i feel like in a in a sense the energy you put out returns and you get what you get i feel like music is more than just music so i feel like it's spiritual your intentions your energy your emotions and your you know your message basically is going out there and you you representing you representing something you representing yourself and you should take yourself serious. A lot of people they look at it as a job or as like um they're 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 trying to say something funny or say something crazy. They don't really care about like how it really affects people's minds, so they don't really take that responsibility. They're like, man, I don't care if I say something and somebody kills themselves. They shouldn't listen to me. I'm just a rapper. That's on them. Other people they look at their self and their word as like you know the word God said in the beginning it was the word. So like words and, and yo, it's more important then just your intention is everything is important. It's more than that. I don't know. I'm kind of in between. Because, like, even when I first, so I first started, like, rapping, it was, like, what, uh, man, like a freshman in high school. But, see, me being, like, raised with my grandparents, like, I made a point to try to sound, like, super hard, but, like, never cut. That's one thing that I used to pride myself on. And people used to be like, oh, and not even pay attention to the fact that I did not cuss, though, right? And so now I had a conversation with somebody, it was uh, some, a few years ago, and I think she may have been like a poet, but then we were just talking back and forth. And then she kind of told me like, yeah, you never want to kind of, sen- I guess sense of yourself is a better word, like regardless of how you feel, because music, like poetry, like anything is art, you know, and it's how you feel at the end of the day too. So for me, uh, I guess I'm, I'm stuck between the two because I am big on like what you put out there too. But like for me, even from a producer standpoint, if I'm selling a beat to somebody and they do whatever they do to it, I mean, that's just what they do. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, like my conscience is cool. Like I'm good. Like they put some crazy stuff on it. Me like, too. You know, so like my conscience, I'm like, I'm good. I know it's not me. So at the yeah. end, they're like, hey, that's what they want to do. They pay for it. Like, yeah, I'll spill you on that. Yeah. I just feel like you need to be aware and intentional about what you do. If you don't, just be intentional about it too. You know, <laughs> no. like how they say, like, no sin is greater than another sin. So would you allow people to rap about like, oh, I shot and killed this person, but you won't let them say like stuff about selling drugs? Like, where do you draw the line? I don't Man. want my clients to go to jail because I want them to keep making music and hopefully I keep making money. So I'm going to definitely say something if they if they confess to a yeah. crime on a recording. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. be like, yeah, yeah, let's probably let's run that back and let's just uh, let's try no that. Again. Names. That's not, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm against censorship. I believe we should keep it raw. We should keep it, you know, we, we keep it what it is. But I just want people to be aware of what they digest and they consume so much of something that's negative and they're not even aware that it's not good for them. They just and they wonder why they depend pressed or why they feel a certain way or why they think a certain way because the vibrations is subliminally like it, it, it lives on in you it don't just go away people like think it's just a song no that song is now in you it even it, i'll even go as far as to say it's in your dna now you know it's part of your diet i feel like i feel like everything does have impacts like that like i feel like you can impact so many people like so many with just one sentence and you only said it once but all these people heard it and now this happens, you know what I mean? I feel like it's you You sort of have to watch what you say, you know what I mean? You sort of have to like, like Gil Scott Heron, he wasn't just blurting any and everything. He was for the revolution. So he pushed the revolution in his music. He wanted people to realize how, how black people were living, how people were living in these poor communities. And he wanted to broadcast that. He put any and everything that he had, all of his, his soul 
into that aspect. And he tried not to, you know, bring in like, like this is, you know, a drug infested community. Yeah, sure. But, you know, let's not think of it as gross and disgusting or this, that, or whatever you may think of, you know, a negative uh, anything. You know what I mean? Let's not think of this negatively. Let's think of this as an opportunity to improve it. Let's think of this as an opportunity to talk to these people and treat them as human beings. You know what I mean? Just because somebody yeah. told us they ain't got a heart. Right. And that's the thing. It's a misconception that people have is like, if you're making a music about things that are like negative going on, you know, it's not necessarily a negative song. It's just to bring awareness and maybe to help people relate that are in that situation. You know what I mean? I feel that. Right. So another part, another piece to go with that, that I learned recently though, is that like, as artists, we want to express and get these things off our chest, whether it's negative or whether it is, if it's real, we want to express it, but we also got to be responsible with how we share it too, because you know, the same way you could tell somebody something bad that's going on. And then now they feel like, you know, you brought their mood down and now you got two people depressed or you bringing their mood down. Not to say, I mean, we, ne we never know. You, you can have an effect and somebody could be like, you know, I needed to resonate with that and it made me feel better about myself. Or you could just be putting out negative energy and people are just like, you know, that made me want to go hurt somebody because just yeah. because you feel like you wanted to go hurt somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's a double edged sword. It has it has hmm. both. With the person listening, their intentions with the song, and both the artist's intention—it's a double-edged sword. Intentions and and and, and uh, reaction to it. You know? So on the other side of like the actual music that's being put out, there's also like the imagery that goes along with it. So like now society is like more and more visual because of cell phones. Like you can see, you can Google almost anything, and it'll pop up on your cell phone. Um, do you feel like now? Because there's always been like stuff they said was like Illuminati symbolism or demonic symbolism. Do you feel like with now of like how Lil Nas X did like the shoes with the blood in it? And now Tony Hawk is doing the skateboard with the blood in it. Do you think there's more like coded imagery now as far as quote unquote Illuminati or demonic stuff now or kind of in the past where it was like super prevalent, like in the early 2000s? I think that's weirdo-ish to want to put your blood in something and sell it, but that's just me speaking. I well, just it's hot like now. Weird. I mean, people bought them out, didn't they? People are into that. I don't know that's why. Voodoo. But... That's kind of like yeah. voodoo. If you yeah, think like it goes back to the to a certain man. market. People are going to buy it. Yeah, definitely. It appeals yeah. to a certain yeah. market of people that are going to buy it. So, yeah. No, nah, it's just out of control. <laughs> Some people do like they tell Lil Nas X is doing for trolls. I'm like... No, nah, I mean, I know everybody's religious beliefs are different, but for me, I do believe in God. So I was like, bruh, I don't even, and it doesn't even matter, like, your, you know, what I'm saying, sexual orientation, nothing that. It's just, like, your, basically, belief system. Because, like I said, some people said it, some of these things are done just in, just to troll. And it's like, I can never lose myself trying to troll somebody. All right, all right. Let, let me kind of take back, though. Like, I was kind of harsh when I said it's weirdo. Okay. Get your money however you can, okay? Get your money however you can. But that, to me, is, like, so extreme that it's, like, I hope you donate a lot more than than the blood that you're selling because you're... <laughs> what kind of person are you? You just want to make all that kind of money off your fame, really. Stop on your blood. I hope you donate plenty of blood at that. But that's that's just... But it is what it is. Get your money however you can. I mean, why not? Trying to, we're trying to we buy sell my our bodies at a nine-to-five job. Maybe it wasn't his idea, who knows? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what kind of record he's like, got. Yeah. I feel like selling your soul is um, basically um, not fulfilling contractual obligations until the day that you die. So basically, even like you're going to live the rest of your life paying off what you owe or just owing somebody something. In other words, you're compromised. That's what I think selling your soul is. Well, like, what was I going to say? I was going to say something about the Lil Nas X situation. It's as far as like sexuality aside, I just feel like people champion these artists way too fast without really knowing who they are or what they're about or the character as if it even matter. Like to me, it shouldn't matter if, if, if he became such a viral success based off of like his little viral song, then why are we trying to act like his sexuality or his religious preference and all that matters now? But if it does matter, then that's something that we should look into before we champion these people and put them on platforms and put them on TV and make them a role model. And then we find out later and then we want to act shocked or we want to take, take things back. Yeah. The thing with Lil Nas X was he, he did, he got more popular after he announced he was gay before he announced it, because I guess he became like 
one of the most recognizable gay artists. Um, not a lot of people are gay in the in the music industry or openly gay, you know, unless you're talking, you know, Ricky Martin, but you know, that's later, you know, right. he, he became open with that. So it's like you got this this totally new perspective for people to look at. And I feel like that is uh in play some part uh, as to what he plays to some people's, you know, champion. You know, like, okay, this is my guy. He's gay. I'm gay. This that's that's it. Let's right. go. It plays a part, yeah. but at a, a certain yeah. point, it becomes like, but is it authentic or it becomes gimmicky at a certain point? You see, like Frank yeah. Ocean now he's yeah. gay and he can still live yeah. his lifestyle, he can make his music, yeah. and people that yeah. are gay can you're resonate with him and respect him. But then yeah. when you when you when you make it a point to like push that forward and, 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 uh, and over your talent, then it's a gimmick. If you're not talent first, you image first, and his image is basically just be just that he's gay. And there's nothing special about that. It's like, okay, you're gay. That's it's gimmicky. Which no nothing to knock him. If it's working, it's working. But I can see the yeah. Yeah. I, I think artists should go big time once they're seasoned. Once they've had yeah. en enough years to really get out there and try different things and be in front of uh, different crowds and really get different reactions, then they're ready for the big time. But it's just mm -hmm. a little odd to me for somebody super, super young to do like one song and then go all the way to the top because then th things like this happen, like the gimmicks happen, because I don't think that they've really discovered all the all those like dimensions of themselves just yet or. You know, maybe they're not everything he's doing well. now. People called it early on. They're like, oh, he's an industry plant. He's going to go into uh, one of their agendas, uh, Satanism, a uh, homo, you know, conspiracies like that. And then when you see it, he's like, well, I guess you're not at the same time. You're not right, but you're not wrong either. You called it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I was looking into labels uh, a few weeks ago and I saw this label. I can't remember the name of it now, but they were recruiting people under 14 years old. They're looking for the youngest possible people to just give them a, a deal it's crazy oh. to me wow there are super talented people under 13 i'm not going to i'm not going to deny it. there are super talented kids bieber like there there really are they're out there crazy drummers uh saxophonists and you name it there's kids out there mm -hmm. that you know yeah on tiktok i see this like Mozart. eight year old come up and you place bass better than i could in 10 years you know like it's crazy so do you think yeah. what is what is the reason that you think they're aiming to find talent so young just because they're like unseasoned because they're inexperienced they they're malleable the label can push them a certain way whatever the tides are going that way as the years are going by or whatever you know what i mean like whatever's trending they can push them towards that trend they don't have an identity yet easy to manipulate them they can yeah. make something popular valuable personalities they follow they can build the next archetype for your kid to follow or whatever yeah. i don't know new justin bieber that's what they want yeah <laughs> he was a he was a game changer yeah my music teacher showed me i remember i was in middle school when he when he when he blew up with like uh baby or whatever that song's called yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, she showed it to like our class and was like look like this could be you if you guys like really get into music like I, i'm not seriously but she was just trying to inspire us in a sense to care about music because it's like look there's kids your age that are seriously like blowing up so, so we have a couple minutes left uh, we could start with Dell if you are available to go ahead, give your socials. Oh, I look like he working, working. Uh, so we could go to James. Yeah. So uh, my social media, everything is DLGV Radio. Yeah, DLGV, think of it like Dayton Love and Good Vibes or something like that. You know, I don't quite have a, um, uh, a meaning behind my abbreviations quite yet. I sort of want to keep it open until I really find something that, that sticks with me. But uh, I've been saying date love and good vibes a lot lately, so I don't know. But uh, find everything, literally everywhere, date and love and good vibes. Email dlgvradio1 um, at gmail.com. Okay, uh, Karan. Yeah, I was saying you can find me all on my, you can find me on all my socials at just by looking at my artist name, Karanic the MC, which is Q-U-R-A-N-I-C, the MC, you know, M, the letter M and C. And I'm on Spotify on all your music stations, streaming and all that too. So if y'all want to check out some new music I got, get ready to drop. It's on the way. Appreciate right the conversation. On. It's been interesting. And was it Jaren or Jaron? How did you say Jaren? Jaren. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, artist name is Dean Cosmic. Uh, you can find all my links and everything at my website, www.deancosmic.com. If you want to hear something uh, that I've made, you can go to Spotify or Apple, type in Dean Cosmic and then space and Dreamland. That's my latest EP. 
Uh, so Dell, we're giving out socials if you had time to shout yours out real quick. Uh, y'all can reach me at uh, on uh, Facebook, on uh, Instagram. My uh, handle is K O T W Delhi. It's King to the World. Um, it's a little project that me and my homeboys are working on, and I'm trying to start a record label soon. So uh, that's that's gonna be the name of the entertainment group. Well, you look out for that. Okay, Carrie. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Kiri Alanis, just like you see spelled um, in the description or right here, if you can see that. And uh, I go by Kiri Alanis Music. Um, I used to go by K Blast. I still do, but for some odd reason, another artist thought that it was cool if he could take that name. Uh, what? I, I, I'm getting royalty checks for it, which is cool with me. Shout out to Sound Exchange. Thank you for that um, for that check because uh, I do I don't appreciate my name getting taken. And hey. um, you, so, yeah, you guys can find me on all socials. I post a lot on Twitter and I post a lot on Instagram and I share a lot of my music and I comment and I, I give feedback on mm -hmm. your music. So you guys can totally uh, share your guys' music with me, too. Uh, shout out to all the independent artists. You guys uh, take care of yourselves and stay up. And and we're going to we're going to make this our full time job for sure. Just keep believing in yourselves. Uh, Davion, you, you want to end it off for us? All right. So, again, it's your boy, Davey. So if y'all can. Um... Find me on like all my social media is, is Davy Productions. So on IG is uh, Davy with three I's, so D A V I I I Productions three, uh, and that's on Instagram and everything. So make sure y'all look me up. Okay, and uh, before we give it back to Tiffany again, I'm Ishmael, I'm a photographer here in Dayton. Uh, you can find me on social media at I am underscore the Ish, um, or you can follow my photography page, which is Scarab Creative One. Um, and yeah, I hope to work with some of y'all soon, but Tiffany, you can go ahead and close it out for us. Okay, first and foremost, thank you all so much for taking part in this. Um, the show wouldn't be possible without you guys, and I appreciate, I know some people on here are repeats on open mic, so thank you again for being loyal and sharing and everything. And that's pretty much yeah. it. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, open, Mike, open, Mike, open, Mike.